This segment is on chemical bonds, elements with unfilled outermost energy levels such as hydrogen and lithium are called reactive because they readily interact or combine with other atoms. Remember that the innermost energy level for atoms is filled if it has two electrons. The second energy level is filled if it has eight electrons and the third energy level is filled if it also has eight electrons. Hydrogen only has one electron occupying its only energy level, so it will readily give this up. Lithium only has one electron in its outermost level, so it will also readily give up its electron to leave it with a filled outermost energy level. Helium, on the other hand, is a stable atom. Its only energy level is filled with two electrons. Neon, as well, is a stable atom with a filled outer energy level of eight electrons. Reactive atoms with unfilled energy levels can become stable if they gain or lose or share electrons to fill their outermost energy level. After they do this, the atoms involved will then be held together by a chemical bond. There are three basic types of chemical bonds, ionic bonds, covalent bonds, and hydrogen bonds. These bonds help to form molecules and compounds. A molecule is a chemical structure that consists of atoms held together by covalent bonds. A compound is a chemical substance made up of two or more different atoms regardless of what type of bond holds them together. The human body consists of a countless number of molecules and compounds. We will start by looking at ionic bonds. Ions are atoms or molecules that carry an electrical charge. If an atom loses an electron which has a negative charge, the atom will then become more positive. This positively charged ion is now called a cation. An atom that loses one electron becomes a cation with a charge of plus one. For example, a sodium atom has one electron in its outermost energy level. If it gives up that electron, it will become more positive with an electrical charge of plus one and will be called a sodium ion. An atom that loses two electrons becomes a cation with a charge of plus two. For example, a calcium atom has 20 electrons. Two electrons occupy its outermost energy level. To become stable, it will lose these two electrons. By losing two negatively charged electrons, it becomes more positive with a charge of plus two and will be called a calcium ion. If an atom gains a negatively charged electron, it will become more negative. This negatively charged ion is now called an anion. For example, a chlorine atom has seven electrons in its outermost energy level. Rather than give up all seven electrons to become stable, it is more likely to gain an electron to become stable with eight electrons in its outermost shell. By gaining an electron that carries a negative charge, chlorine will become more negative and be called a chloride ion. In an ionic bond, one atom loses an electron to become a positively charged cation and is called an electron donor. Another atom will gain that electron to become an anion and is called an electron acceptor. The cation and the anion are electrically attracted to each other because the opposite charges draw them together. This attraction is called an ionic bond. The formation of sodium chloride is an example of an ionic bond. A sodium atom has 11 protons and 11 electrons. Two of these electrons fill the inner energy level, eight fill the second energy level, and one electron occupies the third energy level. The sodium will lose the outermost electron to leave the sodium with an outermost energy level with eight electrons, thus leaving the sodium stable. However, with the loss of the negatively charged electron, the sodium ion carries a positive electrical charge. The electron that the sodium lost will be donated to another atom. Chlorine is an atom that has 17 electrons. Two of the electrons fill the inner energy level, eight fill the second, and seven fill the third and outermost energy level, leaving room for one more electron to fill the outermost shell. The electron donated by the sodium atom is accepted by the chlorine atom. This fills the outermost energy level of chlorine, leaving it stable, but because it accepted a negatively charged electron, the chlorine atom becomes a negatively charged chloride ion. 
The sodium and chloride ions are now stable, both with filled outer energy levels. The sodium ion has a positive charge and the chloride ion has a negative charge. There is an attraction between the opposite charges that hold these two ions together in an ionic bond. The new ionic compound is called sodium chloride. A covalent bond is when atoms fill their outer electron shells by sharing electrons with other atoms instead of gaining or losing electrons. For example, hydrogen is not found in the body as a single atom. Instead, hydrogen is found as a molecule with two hydrogen bonded together forming H2. Molecular hydrogen, or H2, is a gas that is present in the atmosphere in very small amounts. Each hydrogen atom has one electron in its only energy level. Because it needs two electrons to be stable, it will share its electron with another hydrogen. Now each hydrogen will share the two electrons. These two electrons will orbit around the nuclei of both hydrogen. The sharing of one pair of electrons is called a single covalent bond. Oxygen has eight electrons with six electrons in its outer energy level. It needs two more electrons to become stable. Oxygen can become stable by sharing two of its electrons with another oxygen atom. Thus, each oxygen share a pair of electrons, which is called a double covalent bond. The shared electrons will orbit around the nuclei of both oxygen. This molecule is called molecular oxygen, or O2. Molecular oxygen is an atmospheric gas that is very important to most organisms. Our cells would die without a relatively constant supply of oxygen. Another two examples of double covalent bonds are carbon dioxide and nitric oxide. Carbon dioxide is a chemical substance that's produced as a waste product by our cells. Carbon dioxide consists of one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. Each carbon atom has six electrons, with four electrons occupying the outer shell. These two pair of electrons will be shared equally with two oxygen atoms forming two double covalent bonds. Nitric oxide has one nitrogen atom and one oxygen atom. The nitrogen atom has seven electrons, with five electrons in its outermost shell. It will share one pair of these electrons with two electrons in the outermost shell of the oxygen atom. Even when nitrogen gains two more electrons in its outermost shell, by sharing with oxygen it will still only have seven electrons in its outermost energy level. This leaves nitric oxide unstable, and we call it a free radical. It will react readily with other atoms or molecules in the body. Covalent bonds are very strong because the shared electrons hold the atoms together. In a typical covalent bond, the atoms remain electrically neutral because each shared electron spends as much time at home as away. Many covalent bonds involve an equal sharing of electrons. Such bonds, which occur, for instance, between two atoms of the same type, are called nonpolar covalent bonds. For example, with hydrogen, or H2, the shared electrons are pulled towards the nuclei of each hydrogen with an equal force. This is because each hydrogen have only one proton and thus each have a charge of plus one. The electrons will be equally pulled to the positive charges. We will later study that nonpolar covalent bonds containing carbon atoms are found in most of the structural components of the human body and thus are very common. If a covalent bond involves an unequal sharing of electrons, the bond is called a polar covalent bond. For example, in a molecule of water, there are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. The hydrogen atoms will each share their one electron. The oxygen nucleus has a much stronger pull or attraction for the hydrogen's shared electrons than the hydrogens do. This is because the hydrogen has only one proton or one positive charge, whereas oxygen has eight protons or eight positive charges. The negatively charged electrons feel a stronger pull toward the oxygen's nucleus than they do towards the hydrogen's nuclei. As a result, the electrons spend more time orbiting the oxygen nucleus than orbiting the hydrogen nuclei. So the shared electrons spend more time orbiting one pole more than the other. We call this a polar covalent bond. Because the oxygen atom has two extra electrons most of the time, it develops a slight or partial negative charge. 
At the same time, each hydrogen atom develops a slight or partial positive charge because its electron is away most of the time. A polar covalent bond is stronger than a nonpolar covalent bond. The polar covalent bond creates polar molecules, molecules that have positive and negative ends. One of the most important polar molecule in the body is water, which we will discuss in a different segment. The ionic bonds and the covalent bonds that we've already discussed tie atoms together to form molecules or compounds. However, there are other forces, weaker forces, that help tie two molecules together or that help a larger molecule take on a different shape. The most important of these weaker forces is the hydrogen bond. A hydrogen bond is an attraction between the partial positive charge of a hydrogen atom and the partial negative charge on an oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine. The oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine atom can be on a different molecule or on the same molecule as the hydrogen atom. These hydrogen bonds are too weak to create a new molecule, but they can change the shape of a molecule or they can pull molecules together. For example, hydrogen bonding occurs between water molecules. As we discussed earlier, the hydrogen atoms of a water molecule have a slight positive charge and the oxygen atom has a slight negative charge. The partially positive hydrogen atom of one water molecule is attracted to the partially negative oxygen molecule of another water molecule, forming a weak hydrogen bond. At the water surface, this attraction between water molecules creates surface tension that slows the rate of evaporation and also explains why a particle of dust or a water bug can rest upon the surface of the water without sinking. In cells, hydrogen bonds create the shapes of complex molecules such as proteins and DNA. For example, the partially positive hydrogen atoms form weak bonds between the nucleic acids of DNA to give it the helical formation. In another example, the partially positive hydrogen atoms form weak bonds between amino acids of proteins to give proteins a three-dimensional shape.